Hey guys, and how's it going? This is a, I don't know, 15, 20 year old Toro riding mower that got donated to me. And the backstory that I have on it is they were cutting, actually sucking up leaves, I think in the fall. And it suddenly died on them. And that was it. The person moving, getting out of a house into a, I think a townhouse. And I said, you just gave it to us. And we're gonna go figure out what happened to it. I think the motor is locked up more than likely and again it died while it was running and it wasn't like it was sat and they tried to run it i have not looked at it other than loading it onto the truck so i figure we'll do a little bit of autopsy on it possibly we could fix it possibly we're just going to tear it apart and find out what happened so let's get set up maybe we we'll get that hood off of there give us a little room and let's go start wrenching these things are pretty easy they don't even have um any bolts you got to take out just got to get the power wire to the headlights and you kind of Almost like a tailgate on a pickup. You find the happy spot halfway open and it should lift right out. There we go. Makes for a little bit of room. I know it looks a little bit of dirt, a little bit of dirty. It looks dirty, but when you're doing fall cleanup, that's generally what happens because you kick so much dust up. It really creates a storm. My mower does the exact same thing too. I see it's a tad low on oil. It's got oil in it. But it is low on the stick. I'm sure it doesn't help things. I don't know if the battery has any power in it. We could probably do a bump in the key and just get an idea what happens. I don't have to be sitting on the seat. I mean, it's a brake pedal though. Yeah, that's not looking good now, is it? Let's see if we can get anything. Yeah, she's not turning. Yeah, so we got a locked up motor. Let's pop this cover off, get that out of our way, and we'll get into it a little bit more, be able to grab a, a little on the flywheel a little bit more too. Get those screws out. Common in our area too is a mouse nest. Let's see if that's an issue. No, it's pretty clean. All right, let's see if we can go give her. A... It's turning. Chalky, but it's turning. And the starter is in the engaged position. It's locked in the up position, but that's probably just from trying to crank it with the starter. Let's see if we can get that down, that even in there tight. No, so that's not any part of the issue. Let's get the uh, plug out of it. I'm already starting to think that being the oil level is low, you can kind of see it's been seeping oil around it too. Everything is, you know, even all the seams, you can see oil wet you see oil wet around the oil filter my guess right now is it just kind of ran low I'm probably locked up on the crank but that's just guessing big thing is whether the connecting rod let go of the piston eh, it looks normal turn it see if it goes Go uh, get a screwdriver down inside there, or a pick. Let's see if that piston's moving up and down. Yeah, the piston's moving. That's good. Huh. Yeah. So the piston and the connecting rod and the crank are still connected to each other, <laughs> and now it's freeing itself up. Might be not totally fried after all. I'm gonna take a quick peek. Let's take a, pick, a peek underneath on the crank. Make sure we got nothing going on with the pulley or the flywheel. Jamming us up, we got a higher belt up here. That drives the trans, make sure there's just nothing jammed up inside there. Huh. Yeah, it's not making a, a full turn though. Is that rubbing right there? No. That clunk's not good. <laughs> They're not supposed to do that. I still think we got a rod problem. I think you'll pop you back in the stand and uh, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, see if we can get the spin all the way around. The starter's out of the way now. The gear went down. Yeah. Something definitely let go. Hmm. Sounds like stripped gears, doesn't it? That weird that noise I actually 
actually think we can crack the top of this engine off of here while it's all in one piece, but I haven't, you know, remove it. I think we could take the, the whole top right off of here. Let's get the flywheel off. We know it's got some kind of internal damage. Something is just not with maybe the governor let go. It's getting better. <laughs> Let's, um, let's see if the starter will spin it. I don't know what the battery's got for a charge. That don't sound good. <laughs> yeah, it's got some internal issues. Let's get the flywheel off of it. Let's get that flywheel off of there. You know what? Run it back on a little bit and get underneath it with a pry bar. And here we are not going to harm anything. Let's go right where that bolt is there. Can we get there? I want to get that play to go upward. I'm going to whack down with a hammer to see if we can get it to pop. Right on the magnet. <laughs> it's fighting me. I'm gonna have to take. Let's see if we got room there. Damn it! There we go. It didn't shear the flywheel key. That's still good. magnets real quick. I've seen where the magnets have broken themselves off too and caused it to jam up. I don't see that being an issue though. All right. So the crank's going to stay behind. We need to get rid of the charging system. We'll unbolt the starter, get that out of the way, and then we'll run, get all these bolts all the way around off. And we'll see if the case, we can get the top of the case to pop off of here. Actually, this can stay. Yeah, let me get this out of the way. Some of the other hardware. See if we get this to pop up. Of course, they're not the same. starter out of the way but they got like a little quick clamp on the wire going to the charging system I don't know if we can get on that or not one of those little one-way tabs we need a little poker oops Let's see if we can get underneath that throw that anywhere it's a wire free I don't think that's gonna stop us I can get it out of our way though we can flip it up out to the side because the plugs go into a, a bunch of other plugs not like I can take it right off the system
I think that's it. Other than all the crud that's on it, I'm gonna take a minute to take a rag, kind of clean some of this crap off so it doesn't go fall and see if we can get a, a hammer underneath and tap the cover, see if it'll pop up for us. Let's give her a couple taps, see if it comes free. Seems like one something's holding it somewhere still. Give it a couple more taps. It's it's free, but it's could be just the gasket material. So you can get on the other side. Probably a couple of dowel pins too. I still have the oil filter on it. It feels like. Let's get that key out of the way. That might have a problem for us too. Yeah, that seal's gonna probably run into it. It's up about a quarter inch all the way around. I still have the oil filter on. I don't know if that's running into something. I don't think so. The only other thing I see is like a set screw right here. Give her a little bit more caps. See if we go. The air cleaner housing has me right there. I don't think that's all of it, but the lip is up over the cover. Something. There it goes. <laughs> something fell. Probably a governor, I would think. Let's go. Put that to the side. We'll take a peek, see if we see anything that's totally fried right away. Looks like it was probably a thrust washer. That might be the governor right there, or that might be a uh, a decompression valve. I don't see one on the other side. Yeah. Let's go grab a light and look down inside. I don't see any bluing on the crank. I don't see any immediate telltale. What was here? Something was right there that's not there anymore. Did that go on to so that fell right in this lines right up in this groove right here and it's got some hammering that looks kind of suspect doesn't it okay counterbalance shaft and maybe whatever pin was in there it seems like it fell out i don't know if that was it huh yeah, we'll go grab a light we'll take a peek down the side see what we can see yeah i've never had one of these part before that's the governor lever right here that probably is something that did fall apart that might be where that pin is right there whatever the, the governor somebody that was on that lined up right there i see pieces and i see a governor gear is that gear that gear is gone i think the governor might have blew apart let's go pull up some bits oh yeah <laughs> now there's your problem the governor destructed itself and then I wonder if it went full throttle or and it just jammed itself, probably just jammed itself in the gears or in the crank and stopped it from turning. I did not expect to see that. I think I just oiled up my light too. Right, what piece is that? Going in. 
I thought we were going to have a problem with low oil seizing the crank. Oh, we got metal bits. Or something. There's shrapnel. What is that? What is that? It's all part of the governor too. Huh. A little further. Yeah, that's part of the governor. That's nothing. I thought that was something right there. That's part of the case. Let's drain the oil out of it. I wanted to leave the oil in because I wanted to see what we had for a level. I don't think that was what it failed for. We got a little bits and pieces. Let's go drain the oil out of it so if the level comes down, we'll, we'll get to see kind of what's floating underneath all that crap down in there. And see if we can see anything else that's uh, an issue. And where all that stuff came from, which I believe is going to be stacked up right here. And then again, this is kind of you know, this counterbalance shaft. All right, let's get the oil out of it and we'll get a better idea. Yeah, I definitely expected to see the rod just blowing out from the rest of it. So definitely say it does need an oil, did need an oil change. Let that pee out for a while. I'm going to lift up the other side of the tractor a little bit and tilt it this way to give it a little bit better flow. We'll let that level go down. We'll, we'll see what kind of dinosaurs are left when we drain the swamp there little bits are on the bottom we'll figure out kind of what blew apart try to anyway whoops i don't see the normal rainbow in the oil it does look like there might be a little bit of metallic in it but i don't see you know, usually when the rod or the spins a bearing it really kind of metallics out the oil but i'm not sure those Long skinny, there's more of it right there. Whatever that is. If that's bearing or is that something else? My guess is that that is bearing. I see what looks like a spring or a bolt right there. I gotta stop doing that. <laughs> and there's a pin. There's a pin. What else we got? It's gotta be whatever was right here that kept the crank in a straight line this counterbalance in a straight line i wonder if that was the guts from that you know the, the rod bearing will be lower did it spit it out of there yeah i think that's where it came from so i think this counterweight seized up spit out the bearings it just got to be too much on that pin and that's why even on that cover it's got that beat up those marks on it right there it was probably binding and that was working real hard normally it's a smooth flow back and forth but because this was binding up it started pushing against the sides real hard oh yeah write your own jokes yeah i'm not seeing it usually here's the rod right here you'd see blue around that it looks like this counterbalance is what let go go grab a magnet we'll fish out all the little pieces out of there we'll have a better idea what's going on then we can start maybe pulling these gears off and dig a little further and see what's happening inside here i got you suspended from the roof of the ceiling you getting a head rush <laughs> let's go uh do a little bit of picking with the magnet a little fishing expedition Yeah, so that's the piece that sat on the top for the governor. Just kind of go plopping around. I got something. I got a lot of hamburger. Yeah, it's just a bunch of magnetic mush. Let's see if you can find any more bigger pieces. I gotta get you a look. That way here. Let's go see what that spring looking thing was that we saw. Magnet wants to go on everything else, but a magnet or a bolt. What's that? 
Something with reds on it. And more shrapnel. Yeah, I, I would definitely say that's probably the whatever it used for bearing. Yeah, man. Might be better off with a little, little gripper pliers, you know. See, that's what it did. Let me really squish that out, huh? I wonder if that was like flat just, just on this surface and it got so hot it like literally rolled the corner and did that or did it have a lip on it? Probably put it back together and get an idea. Anything else? Go swimming down in there. Bunch of metal. There's a whole big something there. I got something good. <laughs> Hold on. Get this out of the way. What's that? Your battery's flashing. We're gonna go as long as we can. We'll just throw that in the oil pan. Let's see if we can get this big piece out. Whatever that is. It's like a lever. Not a bunch of more crap. Going in. It's not metal, that's why. Like a rubber pickup tube. That might be for the oil, maybe it's the oil pickup tube. I'm gonna go change your battery. Well, let's see if we can get, I don't know if these are gonna lift out of here or not. Let's get the, them out of the way, you can probably see down in them better. I'll try to line them up. How they came out, I'll put them on the bench. Same fashion. Now get them out of the way. Leave those rods in there for now. It'll give us a better chance to go peek. And let's go a little, do a little bit more fishing. Where's my magnet and my flashlight? I'll meet you on the other side. Let's go and see. more oh we got all kinds of crap in there huh more governor parts it looks like yeah yeah that can't be good one thing i haven't seen yet is i don't know if that had a bolt going through that or not i haven't seen where that ended up i see a pin up over here i don't know if you can see all there no, you can't a pin of some sort right there that's not the magnet I'm trying to pick it up with the flashlight <laughs> there we go here's a pin out of something all right any more the crank I don't know about if we can get that rod off of there if we can get the bolts off the rod maybe we could push the piston up and we'll lift that whole crank right out actually no we got we got to get the um all the stuff underneath the engine off first before that can happen. Let's see if we can lift that gear off of there. Went a little bit. There it goes. Let's see if you get the... Maybe we can lift that off of there right now. Let's see if the weight will come off. There we go. Oh, it's got two halves, an upper and a lower. That really doesn't look like that looks like it still has a bearing to it, doesn't it? That one. Hmm. Something let go somewhere. <laughs> that strap metal came from somewhere. Let's go see it. Oh, that was for a fit. It's loose, but it's... You know, it, it, it's just a counterweight. You know, I don't see anything that's really... This is like a two-part bearing. I'm not sure. I'll we'll wipe that down with a rag. Let's see if that surface is all like marred up. 
No, it doesn't. There's a lower half to it. Here's the pin. Oh, right, you're swinging. Here's the chance that it spit out of that lower half, huh? Yeah. That's really sloppy. There's your problem. <laughs> That's where it came from on the lower side. Which is odd because you would think that the, um, you know, if it's starved for oil, this is, this was wet. That was like literally under, you know, bathed in oil. Why did that one let go? Hmm. It's got a locating pin for the two halves. Did that go all the way up through? I wonder if that pin went all the way up through and was what was supposed to be that, that little guide that was keeping it square. Yeah. It's pinned into the bottom though. We can't get it out. I don't know if that broke off or not. So, unfortunately, it's going to be a pain in the ass to get the pulley off the bottom. I'd still like to dig in a little further though. You would too, right? So we got to get that crank pulley out of the way, get that down, and then I think everything can lift up out through the top once we get the connecting rod off. So let me get this mower deck out of the way. We don't have a choice because, again, we got to get, there's a bolt right through the center of the crank on that pulley that's stopping us. Plus there's an upper one yet too. That's just for the mower deck up here. Up there is another belt that drives the uh, transmission. Going in. Put the latches, pop the belt off. Let's see if we can wiggle that out of there. That's a tad dirty. Looks huh? in decent shape though. Well, the pulley's still on the bottom. Let's see if we could turn that so that that rod is facing. That way, let us. I right. guess we'll leave it right there. As long as you get to the two bolts, and yeah, it's not good. Keep going the other way. Yeah, there's more room on this side. Let's get the two bolts off the connecting rod. We'll drop, we'll get an impact gun if we can. Actually, we're probably going to have to lift the front of the tractor. To get that bottom pulley off, we should be able to lift that crank right out of there. Let's see if we get that rod to break free, the cap anyway. That's not even tight. We'll see if the, the connecting rod spun too. Where are you? That one wasn't bad. The other one didn't have much on it. Generally, that's a like an indicator that possibly spun. I'm going to find out in a second. So no makes this, this has an oil pump. A lot of engines are splash. A lot of the horizontals are splash. This is a vertical. And it's fed through the center of the crank. The holes in the center of the crank that kind of push oil out of the middle. And it makes it so that the the rod never really touches the crank. It just floats on a cushion of, of oil leaking out between. So if it starts for oil, then it starts hammering on itself. It eventually starts getting hot. Then it starts transferring bearing material, material to the crank. These might not even have a bearing. It might just be aluminum. Let's see if we can get that rod to break loose. Let me... Uh, Something to hit it with. Let's get the cap off. There it goes. Drum roll, please. See what we get. Are you going to fight me every inch, aren't you? <laughs> it's probably got a locating pin, maybe. Let's see if we can get in there. It actually looks good. Yeah, the rod didn't have an issue. Be all scored up and burned up. So it was just that lower section. And again, if it starred for oil, 
there's much more pressure on the connecting rock. It's, it's fighting a compression stroke and then gets power. So there's a lot more energy between here and here than this thing just floating around on itself. And again, quite not sure, possibly maybe something else let go. Maybe that governor let go and caused it to go down to that bottom section and get hammered. Don't know. That straightened up. Could be, should be able to push that piston straight up into the bore. You can get, it, you can get off of it. We're going to need to get off of it to get the crank out. So, without taking the cylinder head off, you know, so we can give her a little bit of. I think that's it. I think it's the piston's all the way up. Well, let's get that bottom pulley off because that's what's holding us now you can't lift the crank out because of that let's see if we get that out of the way we might be able to kind of you know cock it up and get a little bit of an angle to get it up and out where you don't feel like splitting all this stuff off of it right now, now i think we have didn't we have it earlier we had that for let's try to take it with it let's see if we can do that there we go now we got it i'm sure we'll get it there now it's out of the way now we should be able to Get that once the crank's off, the pulley's off. Yeah, let's see if we can get her up. That should be more than enough for an impact gun. I get some room. Tight it in too. There's still a belt up there. See if we can get around that. It's like a big mouse trap waiting to get me. Yeah, I'm gonna need two hands to get up underneath there. Probably gonna put the foot pedal down or something. Get a little bit of slack. I think I got it. Let's get off the idler police back there. See if that's enough room. We're in. Let's see if we get that crank to lift out of there. Is there anything else holding it? Could be. That sucks. I wanted to go in. I wonder if it's the Feels like there's some kind of race on the bottom underneath it. I can spin up my fingers and feel a, like a shoulder. I don't know if it's just something that's kind of pressed on there. I don't feel any hardware holding it. I'm gonna try putting a jack underneath it and push up on it a little bit and see if uh, we'll get it to pop free. It might be just like a um, a sleeve that's on the bottom of the crank on the outside of the case that's just kind of tapped up there. See how a little bit of a positive influence has on it. And I think we need some kind of nylon mallet. There you go. See if you can. Nope. Could even be pressed on there, I'm not sure. I'm gonna go take a mirror, take a peek underneath and get a better idea of what's going on. Probably should have done that first, huh? There's really nothing on it. I don't see anything that's holding it up. Apparently, you know, something is, but 
It is now locked up. I can't turn it. Let's give it a, see if you see how much play it's got to go whack down. Yeah. It may just have a burr on the end of it that's not allowing it to come out. I don't know. You gotta lift up on it and it locks in. Like I said, unless there's like a pressed on sleeve that I'm not seeing, I, I peeked underneath. All this, only thing that's underneath is the seal that you can see. And then like this side of the shaft with the seal on it, there's nothing else around it. But if there's a shoulder like a, on the crank that they put like a, a ring, say something like that, you know, without the teeth is on the bottom of it. And I'm trying to get this off the crank is my only guess. I'm gonna jack it back up. It's beat anyway, we can't beat it anymore. Well, we can beat it more. I'm gonna jack it back up and try to uh, wail it out a little bit so we can get that crank to wiggle its way up out of there. It's coming out, just doesn't know it yet. Let the beatings begin. I'm gonna try tapping it from side to side. about a half inch the rod doesn't want to uh technically rod is go down that much further i can keep working on that i think it just needed a couple more hoochie daddies and it went popped up a good half inch or so not quite sure if we got there all the way but something's happening she's a moving that's what i think it is got a collar on the bottom that got run up and now it's just stuck on it. A couple more pumps with the jack. The tires are back on the ground. Give her some of that. Beat the tractor down. There right, guys. We're in. Oh yeah. It has a little bit of chaos. Here's where it went bad. The and funny part is the rod is fine. Here's the oil passage and there's a bunch of metal burned right up on it. Right. Yeah. Grab you where you can see. We'll take a peek down. Look in the hole. We need a light too. Where's the light? Where's the light? What'd you do with the light? There is light. So there's that there's the like counterbalance shaft. And whatever was in there for a bearing is no longer. There's a bolt, bolt that went through the upper and lower half. You think there was threads on the top of that? Why would it be a bolt, right? It must have been in threads and it snapped off. And that surface is cooked too. But that's, is that what that wrote on? No, the crank was touching that. So the base of the crank was chewing up that surface. Any more bits hanging around? Going fishing. Whatever happened, it seemed like it went fairly quickly because it doesn't have a bunch of that like rainbow metal in it. That metal or plastic? It feels like it's plastic. I wonder if yeah, it's just a guess. I wonder if uh, the governor let go and it over revved. Fortunately, the gentleman that had this has a hearing issue, and he can't really hear what's happening. He wears a hearing aid, and uh, so he wasn't, you know able to give a good definition of what happened because he just stopped on him. I would think it made a bit of a clack when it did it, but yeah. Hmm. Huh. Man was hanging in the bits. That's the pickup for the oil right there. This is the oil pump this is the pickup. That was definitely, you know, under 
the oil. It wasn't like it ran out of oil. I guess not all that clean, but I don't think that was with the failure. It might, it might even be something that's common with these. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to go clean my hands up. I'm going to go back over the bench, go lay some pieces out and take a peek. All right, so I'm going to give my little synopsis, guessopsis of what happened. And, uh, you, know, you guys are welcome to give your input too, but here's my thoughts of what happened. Kind of looking at the bottom of the case there, you see how tore up that is and all the damage that is on there and what's happened. Uh, you can see that the, the center is pretty good, but it drops off around the edge out here. Let's go take a look at the parts on the bench. So what I think happened was the, a failure on the large bolt going through the center of it so these counterweights just uh, counteract the motion of the connecting rod and the piston on the other side of it it's uh, a lot of times the crankshaft just has a fixed weight on it to try to take care of it looks like they got fancy on this one by having one that swivels and has pivot points on it with a little locator and all that kind of stuff and i think they possibly kind of uh over engineered themselves anyway so the, a bolt went through locking both halves together and this is actually a nut. It's got a weird like hex key on the end of it. And then here's the rest of the threads that was on that. So that was all part like that. Bolted together. And this pin located this cam on the upper side of it right here. And that kept everything in line. Kept it from flopping around. I think possibly what happened was I think this bolt actually kind of loosened up a little bit. Uh, maybe from the rocking from side to side motion. Especially it's got a large diameter hole here it's got play to it you would think that if that was the case that you have a cam where energy is trying to drive each each side of it this would be snug it would not have that kind of play in there like that it seems a little odd to me being set up like that again it's just a guess on my part so i think what happened was this kind of worked its way out and uh still kind of pinned the top let's go see if that fits in there no, it doesn't. So it's, that doesn't even fit in there. But I, I think it kind of helped keep the top keyed for a while. You know, it, it the, got loose. The bolt broke, but it was still pinned into the top. So it was still kind of keying it there. And then this pin, the rest of the bolt rather, went through and um, stayed keyed to this. So they kind of stayed in line with everything for a while. But this half was able to drop down. Let's get this out of the way. It was able to drop down. I'm going to exaggerate it. Now, this has a, a bearing material that's on the inside. Actually, it's like that. It had a bearing material that was on the inside of it. Now, a bearing, when they're perpendicular to each other, I'm going to over-exaggerate again. There's a film of oil from the oil pump that keeps these two surfaces from ever touching each other. Actually, the oil pump kind of keeps it lifted apart. And that's true for you know pretty much any connecting rod or crank. Uh, journal in an engine it floats on a, uh, a cushion of oil but they're perpendicular they're perfectly you know level with each other it's not racked in any position i think what happened was this racked then it started pinching and rubbing on the material and it was able to touch and then over time i think it just kind of burned itself up and really got to the point where this probably started actually just locking up and once that happened or the you know that end or the pin kind of came out of the top of it fell out and everything just kind of went to hamburger but that's my guess of what happened i don't think it went for a low oil pressure and the reason why i say that is because oil pumps on the bottom the crank has holes in it let's get you to the very bottom one right there's an oil hole there and an oil hole here. This, I believe, is going to be the main feed going in. This is what pressurizes the crankshaft, so the oil pump's on the bottom. And there's a passage through here. It's all hollow in the center. So oil squirts out of here, oil squirts out of here, oil squirts out of here, and then again, another one on top. There's also another part of it where it does the, um, the uh, other part of the, uh, if it has a camshaft, a, a camshaft would have a feed on it also. Uh, anyway, so... If anything was going to burn up, it'd be the thing the furthest away from the oil, not the closest to oil. This was actually the, the very first thing that got fed in the path. And that would have the most oil 
whereas the you know you would have thought it would have been an issue here more than really what happens is the connecting rod the connecting rod has the most energy happening on it because it goes under compression stroke and it pushes real hard on one side and then when it comes around on the other side uh, it fires power and the power pushes that connecting rod against that surface real hard we'll pretend this is the connecting rod it's the other half of it but pretend this is the connecting rod well when the piston fires it pushes real hard against there this stuff it's just floating it's just trying to take the harmonics out of it it's not really trying to make a uh uh, you know any real work happening it's just there to counter the motion of it take some of the vibration out so that's my guess what happened i think that just that long bolt having all that play if i see it better here the diameter of that hole and the diameter of that bolt is just got too much play in there and i can see over time that just kind of shaking itself a little bit you can even see the bolt what's left of the bolt how polished it is like that did that for a while and it, it looks like it just snapped itself off. You know, you, you keep working that the head of a bolt back and forth. It's eventually going to break. There's the top of it. So you look how that broke off. Now the bolt itself, you know, seems to fit in there pretty good. But that upper part is probably about that much down inside there and I, I my opinion is that i think it just kind of worked itself back and forth to the point where it just loosened that nut just got a little bit loosened up and then it just kind of ruptured from there again that's just a guess on my end you're welcome to make your own input you'll want to see how the uh, governor works see if i can kind of explain that so the governor which is what's left of it has a gear ran off of probably that gear i think it was on top and so that spins the faster that gear spins it has a set of weights on it and these guys right here essentially are a set of weights i know they're all hamburgered and beat up so it's gonna be a little hard to to, to say but these are a set of weights i don't know something like that we'll go with so there's a gear on the bottom those are on top and this is sitting in the middle of it so the faster this gear spins or the engine is spinning it pushes this pin upward this pin in turn pushes on a lever that sticks to, through the block Let's see if you can go grab the light which is that lever right there so that whole assembly was sitting right here so as it revs up it pushes up on this lever when it pushes up on that lever you can see the linkage come down around here that is idle that when this goes this way that's idle that's full throttle so when it pushes up on that lever where is it there you go full throttle idle it counteracts the motion to try to maintain an rpm it's trying to maintain say you got full throttle like 3600 rpm is what these engines run at 36 38 the throttle on the dashboard how you you rev it up it comes down to this plate right here this is your throttle coming in it in turn just pulls on a spring so this is still able to move but you can kind of influence it by how much you pull on the spring to give it you know more or less uh uh influence so here you want full throttle you're going to pull real hard if you want to just idle you, you back off and as soon as that thing kind of revs up a little bit it just goes right back to an idle and lets it kind of come back so that's what that does yeah i am not seeing anything to give me any other indication of what would happen i don't think it's start for oil it doesn't look like it's the case it's dirty it was a little low but I really don't see that being the problem. You would see a, a bad rod. If that was if it was starving for oil, even over the, the course of time, they get kind of scored up and beat up. I just don't see anything. As far as the tractor is concerned, I think uh, it's probably a five or $600 tractor altogether. And to put a new engine on it, it's really not worth it. If you want to go sell it, it you're not going to make any money. Uh, but what I will do is I'll probably keep an eye out for a used engine. Try to find a tractor maybe had a blown motor, which is kind of calm, uh, a blown gearbox, hydrostatic transmission, kind of common that they fail. 
and we could take another engine off of something else. You can go with any engine. You don't have to go with the same one that is on this tractor. These chassis are kind of universal. You look at the uh, floor uh, of the decking, you can see all the different holes on them. You can bolt down pretty much any motor. You can even put a, a V uh, a V twin on it if you want. This chassis is kind of set up for you know uh, almost any and every. The only things you want to kind of keep an eye on is the crank being the same on the bottom so that the pulley can fit up underneath there and some of the charging system you want to try to find when it has a uh, a three wire uh, voltage regulator which is that on the side what that does that stator that we took off on the top makes power and it's got ac it has two legs of ac that come down to here and they go in one side and the other side and then coming out of the middle is one wire coming out which is dc going to the uh, recharge the battery so as long as you find something fairly simple to that and again with the exhaust kind of um, that it ducks out in almost the same area. You get like an old Craftsman mower or something, we could probably rob the motor off of that. So that's what I'm going to do with it, is I'll hold on and see what I find for an engine coming along. The rest of it looks very decent. The tires look like they're holding there. They're not dry rod. The seat's not tore up. I'm guessing the trans is okay. Bagger system looks like it's decent. So that'll be the uh, uh, outcome, I guess, of this. <laughs> It'll get put in a stash till I find something else. And it's that time of the year anyway where all this stuff starts showing up. So we'll see what we have. I might even have one now that I'm not even aware of. All right, guys, with that, it was kind of long-winded. <laughs> but I do appreciate you hanging out with me. Uh, hopefully, uh, it helps you to kind of understand how things work a little bit. And uh, you know, just have a little fun, do a little bit of wrenching in the garage. And I'm sure more will be on its way. Again, it's that time of the year. But with that, guys, I'm going to sign off. I want to thank you all for hanging out with me, having a bit of fun. If you like, make a comment down below what you think what possibly happened. And again, that's just a guess on my part. And uh, you know, yours could be just as good as mine. So with that, <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye. Well, the cam gears got mushed too. Probably just debris when it got kicked up. Went in there and took it out. And the governor's burned up. It has a, a gear. One of the gears is smashed pretty bad. We're going to try hitting it with a file. See if we can uh, fix that enough to make it run. Eh. Or, just make sure it's clear and give her. <laughs> In.